15 seconds. Everything continues to look good as the Atlas V vehicle climbs away from Florida's east coast to five solid rockets. This is a big mission. And the role of Alessan and myself is to actually study the data as it starts to come in. So we've developed in the lab here at Dell State, we have a chamber, a chamber that will mimic the Mars conditions. So in that chamber, we have started and we will continue to understand some physics and the Mars conditions. What we will be able to do for the first time is to have a laser that will be shooting at specific spots in specific region of Mars and we'll be shooting at some rocks. When the laser shoots at these rocks, you've seen it in my life, but when your laser shoots at these rocks, what happens is it creates a plasma, something really, really hot, extremely hot. And the plasma decays really fast. And this plasma, as it decays, emits light. The light will be collected, and so that gives us what we call lip spectra. Those lip spectra will be able, we hope, to tell us, we will, they will be able to tell us what is the composition of those rocks, both at the surface and in depth. And if there is life on Mars, there's uh, some hypothesis that it will be deep, not at the surface. So the chamber, there's a chamber that exists at Los Alamos that people have built there, and we have built our own, and we're trying to analyze what, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the physics under those conditions, uh, and that's part of uh, Alisa's uh, PhD program. Also, um, I might add that in comparison to the previous rovers that have landed on Mars Spirit and Opportunity, this instrument has the capability to do standoff analysis, which yep. none of the previous rovers were able to do. And when I say standoff, I'll explain that. What that means is that the um, instrument is able to analyze um, rocks that are s up to seven meters away from the rover, whereas other um, previous instruments had to be within the range of the rover arm, um, which is closer to an order of probably about a meter away. Um, so this, this instrument allows, allows a, a greater field of measurement where access issues would be a problem. And also, this instrument can, uh, the LIBS instrument can uh, identify a very wide range of different elements. Whereas the other instruments that are within the body of the rover and within the bodies of previous rovers have a more limited capability. Well, this is a really excellent opportunity for me um, to be able to be a, a collaborator on a multinational uh, rover mission to Mars as a graduate student. Um, yeah, I don't know that I, there would be anything else that I could put on my CV that would be better than that um, to a potential uh, employer. Um, and the experience of working with so many great scientists uh, ha from around the world is, is, uh, is uh, invaluable, I think. I think it's uh, matured me as a scientist and as a person. Um, I've gained a lot of perspective about how these missions actually work. Um, and it's definitely inspired me to continue in this vein in my future, in my career. Also, this project is my dissertation research. Um, and I've been studying uh, temperature as it relates to the processes that happen um, under planetary conditions. I think this is tremendous, not only for the optics program itself, not only for the college itself, for the university itself. It just shows what is possible to do if the university has a little bit of a support mechanism, resources to, to go. I think there are a lot of very, very good faculty members here who can actually do things that are really important for this region, for the nation, and for the world. But I think we, this is one example of such things. The other thing is I think, you know, we, we, we shouldn't forget. We are trying to inspire, and I think hopefully successfully, the next generation of scientists, of NASA scientists, and of science at period. The next generation trying to inspire them, engage them, and so that they are the future scientists of NASA and other agencies. So that's something that we, we would like to see um, happen and we're trying to do in a, in, a, in a substantive way. For me, what would be truly exciting is first that 
the experiment takes place, and we've got data back, mm -hmm. but truly that we understand some, we uncover, understand, something that nobody, none of us, at the moment, can think of. That, for me, would be absolutely amazing, mm -hmm. and it is possible. So we've asked a lot of questions. We want to actually understand whether there is, you know, water, life, amino acids, proteins, and so forth. What we call it stromophiles, and these proteins that actually live in extreme conditions, deep in the rocks. But I think for me, as a person, if we uncover something that truly nobody is expecting, that would be absolutely wonderful for humankind.